comparing African American and Latina uh, uh, substance abuse, <coughs> and that paper will be published soon. We were also able to publish uh, on the project in, um, a, um, a series that had as Latinas, the, the uh, nonprofit in Chicago, uh, put together, which was important. Uh, that organization serves the uh, Latina community in Pilsen doesn't have a great history of dealing with Latina lesbian issues, so we were very happy to get the, the, the information on their website and to get that story told in that space. So that was an important effort. Uh, in terms of coalition building, also I mean, the Latinas have been very involved in the uh, immigration struggle, the struggle for immigration reform in the, uh, in the Chicago area. Amigas Latinas was one of the organizations that was involved in um, putting together a grassroots group called CUIA, Chicago LGBTQ Immigrant Alliance, which start, uh, formed in, 90, in 2005 uh, to work on immigration reform, trying to get uh, the LGBTQ community activists to understand that immigration reform was an issue that was important to gay and queer people and um, has been um, organizing and um, working on that issue ever since. There's another group now that is working on this issue that was um, evolved from um, that original group, CLIA. Now, this was not always a, an easy thing. It, for some of the people, some of the Latinos who were uh, working with uh, 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 the immigrant rights movement were not always very welcoming of queers becoming part of that movement. So this was an issue on both sides, right? Trying to uh, make uh, help uh, LGBTQ activists understand that immigration reform was important to Latinos and helping the Latino immigrant rights community understand that there were queers who were part of that community. So it was kind of educating both sides. Now when one of the first big um, mega marches took place in Chicago in uh, 2006, if you remember, there were over half a million people out in the streets. Well, the, um, the LGBT queer Latino communities were part of that march. Um, and um, in some cases, they weren't well, well received. And I have a quote here from one of the Latinas who participated in the march. She said, um, although I was completely impressed and inspired by the amount of people in support at the march, my partner and I had an extremely negative experience there. While we were walking throughout the march holding hands, we were stared at constantly and got a number of rather nasty and hostile looks from people. On top of this, some guy actually had the nerve to come up to my partner and I and began personally insulting us. He called us a bunch of faggots, told us we made him sick, and said that queers have no right to be at the rally because it's not a queer rights march, and told us to go home. So clearly, it wasn't, uh, uh, um, you know, not everybody was excited to see the queers there. But, um, <coughs> similar incidents um, at this march. The um, CLIA, the, this group that was working on uh, Chicago LGBTQ Immigrant Alliance, got together with folks who were um, the, some of the Latino leaders of the queer movement to talk about working on homophobia within that movement. And uh, actually, it, it, it turned out that people were pretty receptive to this and have, have, have since worked on that type of inclusiveness, so that even um, uh, immediately after there were immigrant rights marches in 2007, 2008, and ongoing, and we never had those kind of incidences again. So I think that reaching out and uh, trying to get people to work across differences to recognize what the, the, the similar interests are can be really successful if people are committed to doing that work. And these are in the, um, more uh, current pictures from Green um, uh, Max uh, rally in 2011. And that's two of the Amiga board members at the rally. Um, again, uh, Amiga Latinas was interested in working with Affinity, the African American um, community.
community services group and other groups that has for a number of years held holiday parties and other events which bring together the, the women from Affinity and from Amigas Latinas. Amigas has also been involved in the queer dyke marches that started trying to move the dyke march out of Andersonville in other communities, into other communities over the years. The first attempt um, was the, uh, in 2008 and took the march from Andersonville to Pilsen for a couple of years. It, it very successful. This attempt has been to bring the conversations and the march to other communities, not just Andersonville. In terms of um, transnational organizing, Amigas uh, Latinas have been involved in the Encuentros uh, every few years in Latin America. Women get together with uh, Latina lesbian activists, get together in different countries to talk about the issues that are of concern to them. And um, the uh, Latinas in the United States sometimes participate in these meetings. In 2010, the president of Amigas, Rosa Yadira Ortiz, was able, through a grant from Australia, go to, was able to go to Guatemala to participate in uh, a one-day uh, encuentro interaction that was set up by the, the organizers to bring together uh, Latina lesbian organizers from the North, from uh, the Americas, from uh, North America, uh, with the Latina lesbians in the South. And so um, these meetings are very interesting and important for organizing. Uh, Latinas have not always had the best reception there because people feel like they're part of the enemy, they're part of uh, the, the United States, they're imperialist, with all these kind of stereotypes. There's sometimes not an understanding about who Latinas are and what you know, class differences, racial differences, and their own struggles in the United States. And on the other side, um, uh, Latinas from the United States sometimes have a stereotypical view of who the La Latina, uh, Latin American women are, the activists. There's this um, um, idea that they're, they're closeted and there's no space for them within society. So, for example, Rosa was telling me how um, surprised some of the Latinas were that there were uh, some Latin American lesbian organizers who were out and open within their families and their community. So there was, you know, uh, uh, um, it was important to have these meetings because they really disrupt the stereotypes that people have about each other. And one of the goals was to put together networks so that when things happen in different countries, they would have support from both the North and from other countries in, um, within Latin America. Um, this was from Siempre Latina Gala that Amigas had celebrating its 15th um, anniversary. Uh, so uh, in other words, uh, 15 years later after uh, it got together in 1995, Amigas Latinas was still going strong. And one of the reasons I think that Amigas has been able to have sustainability, did not crash and burn, is because it's been able to recognize that it is not a monolithic group, that Latinas are not a monolithic group, and that um, the group has to, uh, the organization has to appeal to the different parts of the whole. So this is just a, a flyer from one month in, uh, I think it was 2007, that tells us what, what are the events that month. And what you see is there's an event for the young women's group, for Amiguitas. There's an event for a book club that existed. There's an event for Madurando Elegantemente, which was a, a group in Spanish, uh, led by uh, Spanish dominant women for older Latina lesbians. And it was held in, um, uh, met regularly in one of the, the houses of the Spanish dominant women. There were dances that brought everybody together. It was Entre Familia, again, the Spanish speaking um, support group for families. And uh, so in other words, uh, Amiga Latinas has been able to sustain itself because it's recognized the diversity within 
the Latina uh, lesbian community. And in addition to having uh, activities for everyone, dances and so forth, to bring everyone together, they also have subgroups that meet the needs of each of the individual members.
so they, you know, they had a process for dealing with differences. They made sure people sat and talked about them. And they tried to find resolutions rather than have people go away angry. So process was uh, learning about process was one of the important things that the uh, that studying uh, organizations like Amiga Latinas can can give us. And I'll end with this quote from a Latina, the, the uh, lesbian newspaper, newsletter. Um, this was from one of the articles of the newsletter. We must no longer permit others to exclude our accounts or to interpret them under the pretense that they understand our lives. We must work toward an inclusive community as well as a pluralistic